what stones remain from this ancient village still lie where they have been for centuries, high in the Cantabrian mountains. <laughs> Nearby, a lonely burrow inquisitively stands watch, and carefree flocks of sheep graze quietly upon the early grasses of springtime. From a distance, the tiny village below, called San Sebastian de Garabandal, appears as though it hasn't been bothered by anything in the past 100 years. But appearances always can be, and often are, deceiving. In late March of 1995, herders and their livestock could be seen giving way to work crews and road machinery. One of the first things we saw was uh, in Puerto Nasa, which is kind of the, the center of the municipal area, uh, they had uh, constructed uh, a service station, a filling station, uh, which was very unusual to have it that close before we had to travel some 30, 40 miles to get gas. So that was the first thing we had, had noticed that it was completed. Of course, the activity wasn't just isolated outside the boundaries of Garbondal. This once quiet Spanish hamlet also was awakened by the sudden noises of renovation. But the biggest difference that we saw in the village was as we started up basically the second to last curve going into the village was the mountainside had been uh, scraped down and they were constructing a bus and car parking lot. And we went through two of them. And then as we made the last turn into the village, and then just before you get to the village sign, they had really scraped down the mountainside and, and uh, had reconstructed the road and was building a parking lot, car parking lot on either side. The vendors were, were uh, we had to chuckle. The first vendor we saw was hamburgers. And uh, we watched the man come in. We watched him put up his tent to sleep there at night to, to get his little stand uh, started. But I don't think he did too good a business. Helen and Bevel Outlaw have been to Garbondal dozens of times in the past 20 years. They've grown so attached to this holy place that they are now part-time residents here in this lovely retreat built within the village. To them, Holy Week in Garbandal is a spiritual treasure, a devout experience they renew every year. We started going in 75, and we've been there now 26 times. And, um, and since the last... Uh, about the last six years, we've been going twice a year. Before, we would just go once a year, but we had two events that we really go for. In April, we go for Holy Week, because to be in Garabundel in Holy Week is really something. It's to see all the um, services and the ceremonies that they go through that you don't experience in, in America. It, it's wonderful. So that's become a part of us, to be there at Easter. And one of the special services uh, uh, back at the church that the villagers has during uh, Easter time is uh, the candlelight service. And this is uh, practice still there, and I know it's uh, an old tradition in the church, that there's a fire started outside of the, the church, and the, the uh, priest comes out, lights the candle from the fire that's made there, and goes through the ritual of the prayers and the reason for it. And then he'll light the candle of one of the villagers, and then they pass it around until all the candles that they're holding are lit. And the adoration of the cross is so special there, too. And those, that's one of the reasons we like to go in, in April. However, this Holy Week wasn't like any other from the past. And it wasn't just the busy workers and their heavy machinery that was causing all the stir. For months, rumors were flying throughout the world. Rumors telling of something big which was about to happen here on this holy ground during this holy week. Yes, the newspapers, uh, uh, I guess, began to get the news that all the hotels were, were being, the reservations were taken from Santander right on down to, to Garabondel. And uh, they probably were wondering what in the world's happening. So investigating into it, they found out that the people were coming, these tourists were coming for this expected miracle. Yeah. 
Some 30 years ago, four girls from Garabandal, Conchita Gonzalez, Mari Loli Maison, and Jacinta Gonzalez, all 12 years old, along with another friend, Mari Cruz, who was 11, experienced at least 2,000 supernatural encounters with the Blessed Virgin Mary and St. Michael the Archangel. Since the first apparition, untold numbers of miracles by our Lord Jesus Christ have been attributed to the intercession of Our Lady of Garabandal. However, she promised the girls that one extremely great miracle would be performed in the future, one which would surpass all others, and it would take place here. And our Blessed Mother said that when the time really comes, it will be a wonderful day and, and most people will be able to get there, that the conscience of the world will have changed and, and everything will be geared toward that because before that, there's going to be a warning which the whole world will experience. It doesn't mean just Catholics, it will be every religion, everyone in the world will have an interior feeling of knowing how they stand at that particular moment with God. They will see the sins that they have committed, and they will see the good that they should have done and didn't do. And it's not going to be an, an easy time. So for years, there has been much speculation as to when this great event would take place. Then suddenly, one rumor took on an uncontrollable life of its own, spreading like a wildfire in a windstorm. So they were just assuming there were the rumors somewhere starting. We don't know where it was. But anyway, it was starting that the miracle was going to be on the 13th of April. Mike Wilson is a full-time resident of Garbandal. He is a believer in the apparitions that have taken place here, and he understands how some other believers might conclude that the great miracle would happen during this holy week. Based on what Conchita had said in the past in her different interviews about the miracle happening somewhere between March and May, and it would happen between the 8th and the 16th, uh, and it would happen on the feast of a martyr in the Eucharist, uh, people came to the conclusion that, that this year St. Hermenigo being a Spanish martyr in the Eucharist, and it coincided that it have, that his feast days on the 13th of April, and that he um, died on a Thursday, and he was killed at 8.30 in the evening, which is the time that the miracle is supposed to happen. That this all seemed to come together uh, so that he died on Holy Thursday. And all the coincidences taken with that and what Conchita had said in the past, even though she hadn't announced anything uh, this year, that it was a good chance that the miracle could happen this year. And we ourselves, or the people connected with Garfandal, were hoping that something would happen. And um, so people started making plans for coming here, especially people who live far away. Since it's not unusual for falsehoods to accompany bits of twisted truth, it isn't surprising then that the voices of caution weren't heard by many over the din of unwarranted excitement. Part of the year, Ed Kelly lives less than two hours from Garvin Hall. He is a high school teacher and journalist who has interviewed many of the witnesses to the apparitions. He is also a believer in the supernatural happenings at Garbandal and has written several articles about the apparitions. He, along with most other close observers, maintained that the time was not yet right for the great miracle. And some Spanish newspapers informed their readerships that the conditions were not yet right. The warning, as we all know, or we should know, has to come first, the tremendous warning Conchita says, will be a thousand times more than an earthquake that uh, believers and non-believers alike will receive. You can hide yourself in your closet. You can't escape it. But it's not meant to punish us, but to prepare us and uh, to purify us and to prepare us for the great miracle that will follow. As early as uh, December, in the, in the October-December magazine of the Gar Garabondel is put out by the the workers of Our Lady of uh, Mount Carmel uh, in uh, New York, uh, Joey Lomangino on the very first page says, we strongly discourage anyone from making plans at this time to be in Garabandel in anticipation of the miracle next year. 
Now, this was in October, and I think most of the people that have been following Gar Garibaldi <coughs> all these years listened. But on February, thank goodness, a reporter from one of the newspapers in Santander called Conchita. And Conchita said, no, you know, no. And it was expected, uh, according to the newspaper, to have some 30,000 people. But with the word out, uh, again in February, that uh, this was not going to be the, the year of people canceled their reservations. Still, thousands of others remain hopeful that the great miracle was near. Some would even spend all that was left of their meager savings in order to reserve their place high in the Cantabrian mountains. And soon the pilgrims, along with the afflicted, heeding the calls from their inner souls, began arriving. Some on foot, in automobiles, vans, trailers, motorhomes, and tour buses. Uh, it was quite amazing. Uh, people from the United States and England and Ireland and Switzerland and Germany, Belgium, and France, and of course a lot of people from Spain and many other countries that uh, we didn't uh, try to identify. But uh, they were there, and they were there in, 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 uh, in masses. My feelings at the time these people were coming were like the villagers, because the villagers were shaking their head like this, you know. These people are going to be disappointed, especially these people who are afflicted. Uh, it's very difficult to describe their afflictions. And mothers were carrying small children. They were carrying adults that just fitted into your arm. And uh, it was, and some of those people uh, really economically couldn't afford to be there. Uh, and it brought tears to uh, a lot of the people in the village knowing just seeing these people there, expecting the miracle, and knowing that it was not going to happen, and at the same time knowing that they really sacrificed a lot, both physically and, and uh, uh, from a money point of view. Some of them really couldn't afford to spend the money to get there. So uh, that was a, uh, a saddened time to see that happening, and, uh, and the villagers really felt bad. Unlike pilgrimages of the past when travelers had to endure some of the most primitive accommodations, this time the government was prepared. And even before the crowds began arriving, a solid infrastructure was in place, and even pleasant bathroom facilities were awaiting the visitors. That worried me, and has always worried me about the, when the miracle happens, because there are not many bathrooms in Garabandel. The houses now have indoor bathrooms, but there were times when they didn't have them. And um, we have seen many cases of people that had to use the fields, and that, that was the way it was, we were thinking it was going to have to be. The authorities also cleaned out and painted up the local tele club and converted it into a makeshift clinic, complete with a staff of medical personnel. So the federal government had made arrangements to have some 20 uh, doctors in the village with paramedics, and on the 13th, uh, they were certainly there, and they were uh, doing their duty. Traffic control officers and the local police force were beefed up by the Civil Guard. Even aircraft were dispatched to tiny Garbandal. They had a, a few helicopters that were flying over the village uh, in practice before the number of people got there. One was a Civil Guard, much smaller helicopter. And then they had a large uh, uh, helicopter, medical helicopter, for rescue missions and transporting people that uh, might be in need of that service. Of course, there were several people in the village who had never seen helicopters uh, up close or even flying over the village. So uh, that was quite an excitement there for several days while, while that was happening.
Still, all that worldly excitement didn't detract from the spiritual purpose held deep within the humble hearts of most believers. People came for a good purpose. I didn't see any uh, rowdiness or uh, things that, that, that we would be calling very negative points. People were coming with a purpose and they were heading either for the church or for the pines almost immediately getting off the bus. And they were, had their rosaries out and they were praying as they went up uh, the, the roads. And uh, that, was, that was comforting to see. Uh, and the pines were busy all the, all the time. Uh, we have a balcony that just overlooks the pine and we'd go sit out on the balcony and just one uh, group after another and you can hear the rosary being said from the pines down it carries and that part was wonderful but it wasn't only the pilgrims and the afflicted who experienced the sanctity of being there many public servants were often seen going beyond their official duties and reaching out to the most sickly in order that they also could join the congregates at the pines that sacred spot where many of the early apparitions occurred. And especially the, the paramedics helping the afflicted ones uh, by taking them up to the pines and up the, the uh, Calleja, which is very stony and, and, and quite difficult to, to maneuver. They were taking them up by stretchers and helping uh, those who could uh, walk with a cane they were helping them up and, as well as the civil guard did that so i think that the spanish government did make a lot of good preparations uh, for the number of people that would be in the village undoubtedly there were a few who came who may have left garabandal disheartened because they didn't experience the great miracle before the miracle occurs there is a, a going to be a falling away of the belief in Garabondale. This is this has come from from the seers. And I was afraid, and I still have a little feeling, uh, that because this happened, uh, many people are going to say, well, nothing happened there. Forget that one. Because in this world, there are so many apparitions going on that we'll move to another one. There's something going to be in here. We'll just move on to that one. And one of the other uh, happenings that, that came from Mary, Mary Lowley, uh, which came from Blessed Mother, said that there would be many false apparitions taking place in the world. So uh, I, I feel a, a sadness in that way that some of these people will dismiss Garabandel. Not all, of course. those who did not dismiss Garabandal came away from these Cantabrian mountains with a greater joy in their hearts because the experiences shared here during this holy week were those which will remain cherished within them forever. Maybe some that came this time will have no opportunity because of age, because of their ailments, but they will get graces for having been there, and for that I'm most happy, because you cannot do anything for God that he does not re repay tenfold. This led up to showing the government that they needed to do something, which they did. They just stepped in beautifully and did that. 
it gave the people, and I, and I keep saying it's the best dress rehearsal I know of, they gave the people a chance to, to those who have an opportunity, maybe later on, because we have no idea when, the, when it will come, the, the, the true miracle, but if they have vacation to go again, they will be more prepared. And now, with the dress rehearsal finally over, San Sebastian de Garabandal has reclaimed its tranquil lifestyle. But along with it, it has also become better prepared than ever before to await that final act which was promised some 30 years ago by our Blessed Virgin Mary. Some came with great devotion. Some came looking only for a healing. So they could go away and, and that would be the end of that and then they'd get on with their lives. But most of them came with a love for God that they want to be there because they know something has got to be happening before too long in, in our world. Uh, and I feel those that came there are going to, to spread the word that they were there, especially the believers. And I believe everyone will do a little bit more if they came there believing and if they leave, leave when they believe. And, and one of the newspapers did a real good article on um, saying that we left, we are leaving with the same faith that we came with. And that was the headline in one of the papers. And I thought that sums it up. The people did come with faith, and they didn't lose the faith, they're going to leave with the same faith. Cuando sentiste la brisa pasar, tierra de Tierra de gas. 